Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. So I wanted to do a quick where to start with video today for author recommendations. And usually my where to start with, I pick either a genre or an author and kind of just tell you like, hey, there's a lot in this person's oeuvre or this person's backlist or this genre, here are some places that I think are kind of like friendly points of entry. So today I wanted to do that with Nora Roberts and specifically I want to do it with Nora Roberts like suspense, thriller, mystery type books because the woman is uber prolific and first of all I should tell you, so she's got like three main kind of genres she writes in. She writes paranormals, she writes contemporaries, and then she writes in this sort of mystery thriller whatever genre. I have not had great success with her paranormals to date. They're not like, they're just not quite my thing. It's not that they're bad or anything. They just aren't quite what I personally like out of a paranormal. They are delightfully referred to as paranoras. So I enjoy that, but they're just not totally 100% my cup of tea. So I wanted to just go ahead and exclude that entirely. The other thing is I'm still reading a lot of her contemporary stuff that doesn't have as much of a mystery element to it and still sort of forming my opinions. So I didn't want to include that because I think that would ultimately be its own video. I'm just going to stick with her standalone suspense and her sort of like procedural type books for this video. So I'm going to start with the book that I think is her best and is the place I would tell you to start with. And that is The Obsession by Nora Roberts. This book was not my first book I read from her, but this was the first book that I realized I loved her with. The reason is because this is a serial killer type book. Um, it's a suspense, so it's not that there's a lot of like clues and whatnot. Like you're not, this isn't the type of mystery or suspense book where you're spending a lot of it figuring out who done it. It's more of a sort of like cat and mouse type plot. But it has so many things in her writing that I think is really great, which is it has great family dynamics. It paints the picture of a community really, really well. Just it's evocative in terms of uh, sort of its setting. It also has a renovation element, which is something that comes up in a lot of her books. But there's like an old house that used to be like a big inn, like kind of a gigantic either inn or country estate type thing that the main character is renovating. Um, so you get that. The heroine has like sort of an unusual profession that she's very competent in. And I also think that the heroine and the hero in this are very archetypally Roberts. Like when you read this, you'll get a sense of the types of main characters she usually draws, which is the women are very tough and kind of aloof almost. And the men are um, kind of alpha-ish, but like a very subdued version of an alpha. Like they, they kind of have big dick energy, but they're not like super assertive with the heroine. So if you don't like an asshole bossing around the main character a lot, you don't get that in Nora Roberts for the most part, especially in like her more recent ones. Some of her, the older ones have that more, but in general, that's not so much the dynamic. But anyway, I just absolutely love this. There's also an adorable dog, which is another recurring theme that we will come back to. But this is just exactly what I like from her standalones. And I think it's her best one. So it's the one that I always recommend people start with. So from there, I would recommend continuing on with one of her standalones. And I picked two that I thought could be good kind of second Roberts experiences. One is Whiskey Beach. And the setup of it is sort of a man whose wife was killed and he is technically exonerated, but there's always still some suspicion hanging over him. He also has a family house that he's trying to take care of. So he is there like tending to the house in this sort of isolated community, very similar to the obsession. You'll see a recurring theme here. And uh, there's a local woman who he has a romance with and they're both trying to figure out like, some strange things start to happen at the house and they're trying to figure that out. So I think Whiskey Beach again has that community feel that she does so well and I really like. Um, so that might be a good second book. Another good second book I think could be Tribute by Nora Roberts and it is a little bit older. It's like not one of her most recent titles 
uh, but I still think it has a pretty modern sensibility to it. And it features a house, Reno, and the heroine is a contractor and she's uh, trying to flip the house for profit. She has a history in the community and she's kind of come back and is dealing with that in this small town. And the hero lives across the street. He is, I think, a comic book artist, if I'm remembering rightly. So he works from home. So they have a lot of interaction. I think he's the one with the dog in that scenario. And yeah, just all around another really satisfying kind of suspense type novel. So both of those are suspenses, standalone type things. And I think either of those could be a good second book for Nora Roberts. And then my third pick would be to go ahead and get you to start and see if you like a Nora Roberts procedural. And in this case, she writes under the name J.D. Robb. And we are talking about none other than the In Death series, which is coming up on 50 books long. It is her take on a police procedural. It is near future, uh, not dystopia or utopia, just, just near future, um, set in New York. And our recurring characters are Eve Dallas and her dude, Rourke. And uh, they meet each other in the first book and get together pretty, pretty darn quickly after that. So you see them throughout the series. This book is good and it definitely made me keep reading. Obviously I'm like on book 27, I think now. It is one of those series though that I think gets better as it goes and really hits its stride after about four, five, six books in and really like gets there and stays there. It has excellent character development. The quality of the mysteries vary from book to book. Some of them are better than others. It's never terrible and sometimes it's great. It just depends. But I think what really stands out in this particular procedural series is the character work. And so I, this is one that I personally really enjoy. I'm trying to make my way all the way through it. And um, yeah, if you're looking for sort of like an airplane type book, that's how I think of these is that they're very immersive. They're very propulsive. They draw you in. You want to keep going. They're very bingeable type books. She writes them really well. So if you like that kind of like crime of the week type series, I think that the in-death one is definitely worth giving a shot. And then uh, moving back into the standalone category, I think any of these next three could be your fourth pick. And that would be The Search, The Witness, and Blue Smoke. So The Search, the standout feature of The Search is that the main character runs a, a dog training school and she specializes in training dogs for search and rescue. It's really good. I think that the male lead in this one is one of her worst, which is what keeps it from being higher up in this list for me. Like you should get to know her a little bit before you get to this one, I think, just because he's so blah and you spend a lot of time in his perspective. So whatever. But I think that the charms of the female main lead overwhelms that it has the great small town feel and there's a lot of adorable dogs in it, which is great. Uh, and the mystery is one where she survived a serial killer and now maybe the serial killer has come back kind of a thing. So there's the search. The witness is about uh, a young woman who witnessed something, hence the witness. And she's basically been kind of like on the run and she is a genius and she's a like computer hacker and she ends up in a small town with you guess it, an adorable dog. Uh, and the local sheriff gets curious about her and things from her past start to come back up. It is also really, really good. I like it a lot. I don't, I don't, there's something a little off about the character dynamics in that one, which is why it's not my personal favorite. But actually I've heard a lot of people say that The Witness is their favorite, Nora Roberts, like standalone kind of, kind of thing. And then Blue Smoke I picked because I think it's really interesting in terms of it being an arson, uh, like the main main female lead is an arson investigator and there's a lot about that in the book. It also starts with her as a kid and, and kind of moves with her to the present day. That by the way is true also in The Obsession and The Witness. And I do think that when that is part of what's happening in the book, it works really well. She does a very good job of kind of doing coming of age um, type stories in terms of like incorporating that into her suspense or thrillers. So any of those three, I think would be a good fourth pick. And then finally, I think the fifth pick I have is Shelter in Place, which was her standalone suspense that she came out with last year. And the reason I pick this um, is because I think it plays on a lot of her strengths. And I also think it's indicative of sort of where her standalone suspense slash thriller books are going in that it is much, much, much less focused on a romance and much more just a thriller or suspense. And she's increasingly been doing that in the last few books. 
I think that that will continue. I think she's just sort of run out of steam, honestly, on a lot of the romance piece, which I think is fine. If she's not interested in it anymore, I think she shouldn't worry about it. Uh, Blue Smoke, by the way, also has pretty minimal romance in it, all things considered. But uh, Shelter in Place is about um, two people who survived a mass shooting. It was like the largest mass shooting in US history uh, at a mall. It starts with them as teenagers and then follows them up into the present day. And it is about uh, them kind of dealing with the mass shooting and like how that impacted their life and, and following kind of their development and journey. And it's also following uh, the family members of the shooters. And you start to realize that maybe not everybody who was involved in the shooting died that day. Dun dun dun, what's gonna happen? So that that's sort of the conflict. Again, I just think that if you're looking to kind of understand where her books are going, this would be a good one to give a shot because if you like it, you have more books like it, I think, coming in the future. We'll see how this year's goes. It comes out in July and it's called Undercurrents, so I'm excited to read it. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, but this is kind of where I think her work is headed. So I think it would be a good way to kind of round out your first five Roberts experiences. So yeah, that is my little recommendation on where you should start with Nora Roberts. Uh, her oeuvre is gigantic and I feel like everybody has a different favorite. Like Nora Roberts, I think is a commercial fiction writer who I have a ton of admiration for because she's sort of like Stephen King in the sense of she is just like a workhorse. She is one of those people who just gets up and writes every day kind of a thing. So she produces a lot of material. And she has a certain clarity in her prose and sort of just like solidness in her characters and plots that is really admirable. And it's an undercounted skill in sort of the literary firmament. Like I don't think that you get a lot of credit for being as good of a sort of just technician as she is, but she really is. Like she's a very dependable author who writes really pleasing novels that are very entertaining and moving. You know what I mean? Like she's somebody who can handle a pretty sad or moving scene with a lot of grace. I think she can tackle pretty heavy subject matter in her books with a certain amount of finesse for a commercial fiction writer. Like I'm not saying she's going as deep as, you know, whoever on it, but I think that she has a certain level of insight into the thematic content of her commercial fiction, which in my opinion makes it a cut above the rest. I will tell you, I should give some content warnings that often there's allusions to or outright descriptions of uh, sexual violence in, in her books, which, um, you know, in a suspense or thriller, I don't think is, is too much of a surprise. Um, but I should say that that is, for instance, a very major part of the in-depth series. So if that's something you don't want to read, I understand that. That being said, I do think that she handles that with a lot of like empathy, compassion, and grace. So even if it is um, graphic, it is never fetishizing and it's never glorifying. Uh, I think a really strong undercurrent of thematically in all of her kind of suspense, mystery, whatever books is basically that uh, it is that justice is about making peace uh, for the dead on behalf of the dead for the living. And there's a very intense theme of like justice and why it's important and why it's a huge part of like how we can have a civilized world. So um, all that to say, I love Nora Roberts. I really, she's somebody who I've discovered in the last few years. And I think I'd kind of written off uh, for some of the reasons, honestly, I was alluding to earlier in terms of, you know, not always giving commercial fiction authors enough credit for what they do. And if they can do it well, she is 100% a commercial fiction author who understands what she's doing, understands her craft, is a master and is definitely worth giving a try if you are at all interested in her. So with all that being said, if you are already a Nora Roberts reader, feel free to leave your favorite book of hers below, or maybe a book that you would recommend people start with her with, uh, sort of in the suspense thriller mystery category. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. I think that that will do it. I hope you're having a super lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.